right, let me share with you my screen. All right, so uh, how'd that go with ease? Any major issues? So no, no major issues, but a question. Yes, questions, yeah. Okay. <laughs> But a question. That's a question. Definitely I questions. think, I mean, I think most of us encounter the same thing, but in patrons, what there is with the seating is it's not kind of a direct incline the same way, you know, like you have those three rows on the floor. Um, so what I did was I split it up into two planes, but I'm not sure if that was the correct thing to do. Yeah, you yeah. can do that. Um, the uh, You also could just pretend that it doesn't do that. And, <laughs> you know, you just draw a line from the ear to the front row and the ear to the back row and because you know the different it's not really okay sure i mean um it's not you know the difference is that you might have like that third row that in real life would be a foot or two farther away from the loudspeaker than it would be if you just did a straight line um and that foot or two is not going to dramatically change you know okay what the loudspeaker does uh if it, you know, so that what you did is fine, but um, you could also just do it straight. It doesn't it's you probably get pretty similar results? Um, close counts for a lot of this kind of stuff. You know, <laughs> it's uh, especially in ease. I mean, like I I've, I've run into people who have like just spent spent you know days and days of their life like drawing details of the room and ease that are ha going to have zero impact on you know the directivity information that they're looking for um, so I think that that's that's a lesson to learn is, is you know with, with th something like ease you know paint in very broad strokes <laughs> um, detail is not super important at least with the architecture uh, if you're if you were really trying to do a full acoustic, you know, prediction, then okay, fine. But for what we're doing, just doing direct sound plotting, it's not a huge so, deal. Okay, so not a huge deal. Good to know. Should, like, Nora and I change mm -hmm. our ease files to have one solid um, structure? No. no, you can give it as two. That's fine. Cool. Um, it's no, no big deal. Any other questions? Um, no. All right. So uh, picking up where I left off, I had drawn my one seating section in Catawba. Uh, so hopefully you've all gotten approximately this far. Uh, How do I open up the file that I once had? So I saved it in all the places. So and when you, open, you would yeah. go to your file menu here, open project. You might see I thought it didn't work, I guess. Did you hear that? No? I can imagine. Okay. Just an ear splitting thing. That's cool. All right. Well, never mind then. So turn that off <laughs> and no sense hijacking that audio if I'm not going to use it so let me turn that off now okay uh, so hopefully you are this far and uh, the next step here would be uh, to put some loudspeakers in here so that's kind of what I want to show you today is how to insert loudspeakers. And as I said kind of before that, the real innovation here that Ease brought to the table many years ago was this ability to store uh, loudspeaker directivity data as a digital file. Uh, this data has to be, usually it's created by the manufacturer. Uh, what they do is they put the loudspeaker in an anechoic chamber on some sort of you know rig that allows them to rotate at all different angles and they have a little microphone and they uh, just measure the sound pressure level. They, they run, they run di each different frequency uh, and they just kind of measure how loud and get how much quieter it gets as they move it around and they record what angle everything was. 
So they're getting a pretty good data set. Um, depending on which version of, the, of Ease the file was made in, uh, you know, the resolution of that could be a little bit different. You know, it's, I think usually it's like three to five degree kind of resolution, uh, which is kind of why Meyer doesn't really like Ease very much. Uh, because to really demonstrate the kinds of things that they want to show about their products, they need more resolution than that. So that's why you know they have their own tool called Map. And if you want to get ease files for Meyer data, you got to like ask them and say pretty please, um, because one that's one of the criticisms of ease is that the loudspeaker directivity data um, is not you know a high enough resolution for some people. Uh, I think it's fine for most of what I do, so I don't really worry too much about it. All right, so how do you put a loudspeaker in here? Well, let's take a look. So over here on the left, where you are inserting vertices and inserting faces, you have another option here for insert loudspeaker. Uh, so if you click that, you and then just click anywhere in your drawing here, and you get this dialog. And it's going to ask you some stuff. Uh, the first thing is, like, where is this thing going to go? And that's here on this point of reference section. So it's asking for X, Y, Z, where does this thing go? So let's take a look at my CAD and see if I can figure that out. Let's say, just to make things simple, that I'm going to hang a loudspeaker for now at this intersection of my two center lines. Uh, so it'll be 0, comma 0, and all I really need is the, the Z value. Uh, it's likely that I'm going to have to hang it up above uh, the, the tension grid. This little thing, by the way, is a, a loudspeaker we used to hang there <laughs> that we left every once in a while, but it got blown up. Uh, and then we had to fix it, and now it's, I think it's actually hung up in Eisenberg Social Hall. Um, but anyway, uh, so you know, what sort of height are we talking about here? If I just kind of hover my mouse here, it looks like it's about 23 feet up in the air is about where I'd put this thing. So let's go back over here. And I'm going to say 0, 0, and 23 feet. And then it'll put it up there. Now uh, I hit Apply, and there you can see it, it moved up. So now the other thing you need is the speaker model. Okay, So uh, you're going to hit this little button here that I don't know why they labeled it with and this dot, dot, dot thing. I, that doesn't make it's any sense the to more me. more That means more. I guess. But uh, so you click that, and it says select speaker. So you have some options here. And the options are sphere. Uh, what sphere does is uh, it's basically a omnidirectional sound source. So it just sprays every frequency equally in every direction. Uh, and that's a default. Uh, you, but obviously that's not super useful, so uh, you may want to get some others. Uh, so you're going to hit this little Browse button. And uh, when you installed Ease, part of what it hopefully installed for you was a uh, loudspeaker database. Uh, and some of this, a lot of this comes from the manufacturers, and then Ease just includes it in their installation. But other times, there are third-party companies that create these files. Uh, so a lot of what you're looking for might, is probably going to be in here. Uh, every once in a while, you'll have to go and download something from the manufacturer. And sometimes, the data that Ease has uh, for the last speakers is bad, like it's wrong or it's corrupted or something, and you have to go get it from the manufacturer. So if you ever have any trouble with any, with any particular last speaker data, just go download it. All the manufacturers will let you download it. So, but let me show you what this might look like. So let's go find something that we can put in here. Um, let's go to, so it's organized by manufacturer. Uh, I'm going to go to JBL. Actually, let's do, let's do this. Let's do, uh, let's do Meyer since I was talking about them earlier. Uh, Wes, did you have a question? Yeah, I was just, this is going to sound like a stupid question, but where on, where, like, would you just find those files on, like, the manufacturer's website? Yep, yeah, I'll show you in a minute. I'll show you what, how, one that you can get. 
Um, okay, cool. So if I go into Meyer, um, you know, we have some uh, UPA ones that we sometimes leave hung up in Catawba. So let's just see what those do. So if I, I open up the Meyer folder, and here's a bunch of stuff that they have for Meyer. Um, ours are, strictly speaking, ours are UPA 1Cs, but those are basically the same thing as UPA 1Ps. So uh, now you, you'll see there's some different options here. You've got GLL or SPK. Uh, those are just different versions of the, um, my, of the E's loudspeaker data. The GLLs are probably newer information and the SPKs are probably an older file. Um, so let me, the GLL is a little bit more secure because people were like hacking these data files from manufacturers and, um, and using them in other applications. Uh, and Ease was like, no, we spent all the money to develop this. So they developed a new file format that is, is encrypted and stuff. So uh, let's try the UPA 1P GLL. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna hit add. Now it goes into my project database, and now I hit close, and now it shows up in my menu here of ones to select, so the UPA 1P. So now I'll, I'll click on it, and I will click OK, and there it is. So here's a couple things that happened. Uh, is it populated this SPL chart? Uh, this is basically on-axis response based on the specifications for how loud each frequency is. So what you want to do is hit this little button that says all to max. Uh, and what that's going to do is it's going to set every frequency to the maximum value that the, that the manufacturer says that a last speaker can do, right? So, uh, you know, the last speakers do not have a flat frequency response. So every number here is going to be slightly different if it's a good file. There's this thing for electrical power, um, which I've never fully understood what that, why that information is helpful. Um, I'm much more interested in just the sound pressure level, but there you go. Uh, there is some, you have some ability here to, like you can put an EQ filter on this thing, uh, which is kind of an advanced process I might show you on Monday, but. Uh, you can also, so over here, if it's, a, if it's a DLL or a GLL, you can go to this tab or DLL, GLL setup, and this is where you can, the, oh, the, the other thing with DLLs and GLLs is it allows you to kind of make clusters as part of it. So if you go into this cluster info, uh, it, there, sometimes there's some stuff in here that lets you make arrays. This one doesn't have it, but... Uh, all right, so I've got it in here. I've loaded the file, uh, looks okay. So I'm gonna hit apply and then okay. So now there is my little UPA sitting there at center line. Now I would probably like to aim it a little bit because uh, right now it's just shooting straight out like up over to the wall. So if I wanna aim it to the seats, there's a couple ways to do that. You can go, you can go in, you can right click on it, go back to these properties, and then you can put in angles, horizontal, horizontal which would be you know, this way, vertical this way, and uh, ro rotation, which you would be able to do that. Uh, you, so those are, you just enter those in in angles. So that's one option. Uh, the other option, which I, I kind of like, which works sometimes, uh, is you can right click on it and do this loudspeaker aiming. And what this does is, is you, you now, your head is inside the loudspeaker, <laughs> okay? And so you're now staring down at what the loudspeaker sees. Uh, and you get this little crosshair with sort of uh, where it's pointed. And so you can sort of like keep pointing, you know, you just move your cursor up and down and you can aim it where you want it to go. So I'm gonna aim it there kind of at the back row of the seats, because that's usually where we like to start. And that ended up being a minus 28 vertical uh, angle. So there we go. Hey, Jason, quick yeah. question. On that. So are you aiming for the, like if you were to choose a line, are you choosing the audience listening or are you choosing the face? Uh, usually I'll, I'll try to aim for the back row where the ears are um, the, on the yeah. audience listening area. But 
you know, just, I'm just guessing right now. We'll we'll tweak it in a minute here. So, um, hey Jason. Yeah. Is there a certain you said that it wouldn't work all the time? Is there a certain scenario that that mode would not work? Of just kind of like yeah. Um, so if you if you kind of did your UCS in a different direction, this sometimes won't work. Um, there's also uh, if your seating area is sort of in a strange place where you know ease, wouldn't expect it to be. Sometimes this wouldn't work. Um, so it's, it's, in most cases, you'll be able to use that aiming mode, but just every once in a while, it, you'll, it'll be like, yeah, it's not really working for me. And in that case, okay. I would just go into the CAD file, figure out kind of where you want to aim it and, and get an angle there, or just experiment. That's kind of the point of this program is ex you're supposed to experiment. This is, and this is, I think, an important concept for all of you to keep, to just sort of start wrapping your head around. Ease is not a task that needs to be completed. Uh, ease is a tool to help you make decisions. And if you view it as a task that needs to be completed, then basically what's going to happen is you're going to decide what you want to do with your sound system using information that probably is not really valid. Just you're going to be like, oh, I've always wanted to use the blah, 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 blah in this, you know, Whatever, because it'd be cool. Uh, or I saw someone else do this, so I'm going to do that. Uh, those are really dumb reasons to, to make a decision about your sound system. Uh, but if that's the way you approach it, then you're going to have already made up your mind, and then you're going to do all this work in ease to simply just complete the task of doing an ease plot, because I'm telling you you have to. Uh, and in that case, you're going to waste a whole lot of time and create a whole lot of stress for yourself for no good reason, because uh, you're not going to actually get anything out of it because you've already decided what you want to do. And the fact that it was a dumb decision for dumb reasons uh, doesn't matter because you're going to do it anyway. Uh, and then you're just going to waste time on ease. So don't do that. The better way is to let ease help you make the decision, help you figure out what you're supposed to do. So for example, like Grayson, you're dealing with this situation where you've got this room. It is what it is. They've given you an inventory and they've given you no money. So, uh, it might be, you know, you could spend an all, a lot of time playing around with ease and just trying to figure out where would be the best place if, the, if I have to use only these two loudspeakers and this is the room, like, where, what could I do to get the best possible result, right? Uh, oh, boy, plan on it. So uh, I, when I'm working with projects on shows like this, I mean, I'll spend a lot of time with ease just experimenting, just trying things. It costs you nothing but a little bit of time to just try a crazy idea, see what happens, uh, and then tweak it. Uh, so anyway, this is all by way of saying, just try it, right? Just like point it somewhere and see what happens. And if it doesn't work, then try something different and then see what happens, right? That's, that's the whole point here. It's a lot easier to do it here than to do it when, you're, when you have to be up in the air in a harness uh, in the dark with a flashlight in, <laughs> in one hand and a sea wrench in the other hand. That, that, that's, it's hard to play around with loudspeaker aiming in that scenario. It's easy to do it here. Uh, Wes, did you still have a question? No, that answered it. Okay, great. So, uh, all right, so now that I've got it in here, uh, let's just see what this does now. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit save, and then I go back over to my main win window and hit save. Uh, and if I wanna see what this loudspeaker does, I have to launch a different program within Ease. Uh, and so you're going to go over here to calculations and you want to do in mo almost every case, you're going to want to do area mapping. Uh, so area mapping gives you sort of a 2d view. Like you're looking at it just from the top kind of thing. Uh, so this is my seating area looking at it from the top. Uh, and you've got lots of things you can plot. So this little row of tools here are the different kinds of things that ease can plot. Very few of these are going to be available to you if you don't draw the whole room, like all the walls and everything. Because uh, a lot of these are like acoustic things that involve reflections. The one that you're going to want is this one, direct SPL. And the icon is, I don't know, if, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit on this. I think it's a person with you know, this arrow representing sound from the loudspeaker pointing straight at them. 
I think that's what it is. Um, it's, or it could be somebody getting shot by an arrow in the head. I don't know. Um, so we'll see. But uh, that's the one you're probably going to use most of the time is direct SPL. So you're going to hit that, and it brings up these parameters because it says calculation parameters because you're going to ask ease to do a whole lot of math for you really quickly. So it needs a little bit of information about this. One is which loudspeaker do you want to use for this uh, calculation? So you're going to click on this little button and you're going to select. I only have one loudspeaker in my file, but I need to select it anyway just to tell ease that that's what I want. Uh, you need to tell it. Say what? Jason, is S1? Is that representative of speaker one? So. Yeah, it, it just gets a default label when you put it in there. Um, and if you don't change it, then that, it just does that. It just S1, S2, S3, S4. Got it. Um, I would, ultimately, you should change them to something that makes more sense. But I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Uh, all right, and then you have to say, uh, what do you want to see first? Like, which frequency? So I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do 4 kilohertz. When I'm goofing around like this, particularly if it's for a system where I'm going to be doing live reinforcement with microphones, I tend to kind of work in 4 kilohertz because uh, if you can make 4 kilohertz work, everything else usually works. Um, and 4 kilohertz is usually pretty directional in even the smallest of loudspeakers. The, the horn is usually controlling 4 kilohertz. So I tend to, when I'm just goofing around, I'm looking at 4K. And then later I look at the other stuff. All right. A couple other things you need to look at. Uh, let's just kind of go over here uh, under items. Uh, it's going to ask, hey, where do you want to map the sound? Uh, and your options are on areas or on seats or both. Uh, in this case, I'm going to do on areas, on audience areas. Now, what you is, oh, seats are like the individual little nodes that you place, right? Seats would be, no, seats would be the, um, it's, it's, the terminology here is confusing because uh, they use seats to describe a couple different things, but I'm pretty sure seats is actually the surface that you drew, like the floor. Um, and then there's areas. Yeah, and areas is like that thing that you plop <laughs> up above it, you know, that is <laughs> where the ears go. Yeah. Great. We'll choose the areas, though. Uh, you, can, uh, you can put seats in. I don't, it's not like a super useful tool for me, I don't think. Uh, okay, noise. Um, this is not super useful for direct SPL, but the idea is that if you're doing acoustic measurements, you can kind of input the noise floor of the room in here, and that will affect things like signal to noise ratio and clarity and all that kind of stuff. But you don't need to worry about that. Uh, calculation. This you do need to worry about. So uh, if the main one is this interference. And what interference is doing is it's, you're basically telling Ease, do you want it to pay attention to the way multiple sounds would interfere with each other? Uh, in other words, do you want it to map the comb filtering? Uh, in this case, because I only have one loudspeaker and I'm only plotting direct SPL, there would be no interference. Right, because there's no second sound source, there's no second loudspeaker, there's no uh, wall reflections or anything, so I don't have to worry about it. But if you have multiple loudspeakers that you're plotting at the same time, uh, in, you're probably going to want to turn that interference sum off because it's going to just plot all kinds of mess that is not going to be important to you, it's not going to be useful to you. The only times I leave that on uh, is when I'm trying to really get the splay angles right for a cluster or something. And I, and I want to see that you know, destructive overlap to see if, I can, if I've got it right. You know? But usually I leave that off. So I'm going to turn it off for now. Uh, and then I'm going to click OK. Now here's what happens. It goes, boom, there you are. There's your sound. Um, so this is at 4 kilohertz. So there's a couple of things that I would suggest. Uh, one is that this particular view is not super helpful to me. Uh, it's pretty, but it's not super helpful because uh, it's trying to uh, be, a little, like I say, a little too pretty. So I prefer to turn on this ISO lines view. Okay, and what ISO lines view does is it gives you a line, a dark line, every time you change one decibel. 
okay? So, uh, and then you get a key over here. And that key sort of shows you which SPL level corresponds with which color. So in the center, the first center of the first few rows here, I'm at 101 SPL, okay? And then, you know, I slowly go down here. Now, how, you know, I'm looking for about that 6 dB drop. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, so I've hit 6 dB down, and I still have some seats left, right? So this is, this is not what, I'm, what I would like. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to have to do something about that, but let's just see what the nature of the problem is here. Uh, if I click on frequency here, I can plot a different frequency. Let's see what 2 kilohertz looks like. So I select 2 kilohertz, and then I hit this little button here that says Render Map. And it gives me 2 kilohertz. So there's 2 kilohertz. Uh, so again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I've got these seats over here that are past my 6 dB down point. Let's try another one. Let's try 1 kilohertz. I'll render it again. OK, that looks a little bit better. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm still got seats, though, past my 6 dB down point. Uh, Usually the lowest frequency I'm interested in plotting is 500 hertz. Um, not because I care about it a whole lot, but mostly just because it's usually omnidirectional. Most loudspeakers are omnidirectional at 500 hertz and below. So I just, just to kind of see what are the low frequencies going to do, it looks like this. And here I'm doing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Hey, I've almost got my whole audience area at, with the low frequency. It's easy to cover with low frequency. It's hard to cover high frequencies evenly. All right, so going back to my, one, my 4 kilohertz, let's, let me re-render that, and let's talk about what we think we could do about this. So what, what, what might I do? What are some ideas of things I could do to make this better? Um, point, the, point the speaker more towards or further back, so that way it moves the hot point uh, up. Well, um, I did that, right? This is already aimed at the back row. Uh, so if I go any farther up than that, then basically none of my seats are on axis, which means my frequency response is going to be a mess, right? Um, so uh, in, in reality, that hot spot that you're seeing there is less about, I mean, this is, it, this is really far off axis from the loudspeaker. And that's where I have my hot spot. So it's not, um, it's not a hot spot because of directivity. It's a hot spot because of distance. Uh, remember, the, the loudspeaker itself was not too far away from that thing. Let me go back to my, uh, my uh, thing here. If I, if I kind of rotate this around, look how close it is to that front row. Pretty close. So uh, it's just that that front row is, is really close to it. It's a, it's a uh, distance thing more than a directivity thing. So, uh, so yeah, if, if, I was, if I had not aimed it to the back row and I wasn't as close as this, then yeah, I would think, oh, maybe I should tip it up. Um, but in this case, I think I need to get a little farther away, right? So if I, if I back this thing up a little bit, get it farther away from this uh, seating unit, I think I might be able to widen this out a bit, right? Uh, the other option is I could get a second one right, a second loudspeaker and create some sort of an array or something. Uh, or I could try to find something that's wider, but this is already a 90 degree horizontal loudspeaker, so it's hard to find something a whole lot wider than that. Uh, so let's try moving it farther away. I'm going to go back here to my uh, edit view. And let me right click on this loudspeaker. And I'm going to take it on the Y axis upstage. So Let's try 10 feet upstage. And I'll hit apply. There it goes. And let's take a look at its aim point now, because it might be kind of pointed a little bit differently now that it's there. Yeah. OK. So now that it's further back, I can point it up a little bit to get it back on the back row. OK? So Jason, what is that red circle? So is that like? The, the like mean spread? 
so that's attempting to show you uh, the 3 dB down point for one kilohertz. So it's showing us one kilohertz right now, and that the, that's 3 dB. The yellow is 6 dB, and the green is uh, 9 dB, I think. Um, so, and you can you can set that up. There's there's a some preferences for that somewhere. Um, I don't remember where, but but that it, that's it's attempting to show you kind of what what's going on with that. All right, I I don't find that super useful, uh, but I guess some people do. All right, so there we go. I've re-aimed it now back to the back row. So now I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to go back over to my main win window and hit save. And now I'm going to go back to my, uh, my mapping window. And notice how I've got this yellow box around the mapping area now. What that means is that this app, the, the area mapping app, has realized that I changed something in the file. And so you ha I have to tell it to go and refresh that. So uh, I'm going to go into here and say, into the file menu, say acquire project data. So I'm basically telling the area mapping, hey, go and uh, you know, look up the changes I made uh, and then re-render it. So acquire project data. And it says, you want to recalculate the map? Yes. Uh, it's going to ask me for those options again. Uh, they're all the same, so I'll just click OK. There's what happened. So I'm back at 4 kilohertz now. Uh, and it widened out, right? So it's looking much better now. So I can go one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, oh, I'm almost to the corner there uh, before I got 6 dB. Um, but I'm looking really good front to back, right? I'm only one, two, three dB. So uh, let me back this up a little bit more. Maybe I, can, maybe I can fill this whole thing if I just back it up a bit more. So let's go over here, and I'll take it another five feet. So uh, I'll go 15 feet. And then let me check my aim. Go up a little bit. I'll hit save. Save. And then go over here and say acquire project data. Ah, yeah, now we're getting somewhere. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. I did it. I have a show. Uh, so if this was uh, a play and I was just, you know, do, this was all playback, no live mics or anything, this would be just fine. Uh, this would sound pretty good. We got good coverage. Um, no big whoop. In fact, you know, it'd be nice because uh, the loudspeaker is probably going to be behind a lot of the action where the actors are, which is good. That helps kind of feel like it's part of the world of the play. Uh, so great. Done. Uh, if, however, this was a situation where I was going to have any live microphones, I might be a little worried because if I look back here, uh, just looking at where these, uh, these ISO lines are going, it's, it's pretty likely that I am going to have some sound <laughs> out here, right, in this area. You know, if I just sort of like, oh, I wonder if I can do this. Hang on. Um, let me. Uh, see if I can draw this out. I forgot to set up my tablet here. Uh, there we go. And let's see, I need this one too. Somewhere. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Yes, there. OK, good. OK, let's see if this works. I'm going to get fancy on us here. So um, you know, if I were to guess here, I would say that 
you know, that 96 line is probably doing something like that. This 95 line is probably doing something like this. You know, this line is probably doing, it's getting a little bit narrower, so something like this. So on and so forth, okay? So, uh, and uh, there's probably going to be uh, a good bit of action that takes place there. If this, if I had, you know, like if I had wireless mics on people, you better believe they'd be standing there. Uh, this could present a game before feedback issue. Um, so, uh, you know, if that was the case, then I might not want my last speaker that far upstage. I might want to go back to the idea of the cluster or something, right? Uh, but no big whoop, I could try both. I could try both ideas and see what happens. Uh, so anyway, that's just something to think about and keep in mind. Uh, for, I, I don't think for this purpose of like this stage of the project I'm having you do right now, don't worry too much about that. But for the final project, you will have to worry a little bit about that. You'll have to worry a little bit about how much sound is hitting the stage. Um, so uh, just something to keep in mind. So there you go. I, I did it, right? I put a loudspeaker in. Uh, I aimed it. I figured out a place to put it where it will cover all the seats, uh, and I'm within 6 dB of the entire, on the entire seat, seating area at 4K, which is pretty good. So if we take a look at the other frequencies here, we'll go to 2 kilohertz and render that. Uh, still 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, still within 6 dB. Uh, I can go to 1 kilohertz. Under that, one, two, three, four, five, six, still good. And we know 500 hertz will just be everywhere. There you go. One, two, three, four, five, good. Uh, so that is the basic process. Um, so let me now take you back and we'll look at a couple other things here. Any questions about any of that? Yes. Okay. How do you save this file? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's saved. It just does it automatically. Well, no, it doesn't save me. I mean, I saved it before I, you mean the actual, the map? Yes, the map. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah, what, so what you're going to do is let me, let's pull up the one that you want. Like, let's say, let me do the four kilohertz. I was going to show this on Monday, but I'll show it now since you asked. Uh, so there it is. Now you've got a couple of options here. Uh, you can, um, let's see. So you can go to this file menu and you can say send picture to clipboard, file, or ease page designer. Ease, ease page designer is another little app of ease that lets you kind of lay things out. I have never used it. I don't think it's super helpful, but. Uh, Clipboard would be a little, it'll just put this image in your clipboard and then you can paste it somewhere else or you can do file. And uh, it's gonna save a bitmap, a Windows bitmap uh, by default. You can do some other options, but the bitmap is fine. So I'm gonna put that, I'll just say desktop and this will be four kilohertz. I did two Ks there. Okay, so I saved it and now, um, if I go in here, there it is. Right? Uh, so that, that's the basic idea. Um, you can also just do like a screen capture, or which is all really easy is doing, is it's just doing a screen capture and saving it. Um, so, but yeah, that's the basic process. You save each, you know, you, you run each of them, save each one that you want, and then you can put it into like your layout in CAD or something. Uh, but that's, that's the basic idea. Is there a way to save the actual rendering, like the drawing that you have up now with all of the settings and stuff so that you can just go back and reopen it and it's exactly how you left it? Um, or do you normally just remap it every time? Yeah, because I mean, like I, you know, I, I spend far more time goofing around here <laughs> than I do goofing around in the plot. I mean, the plot, this is just where you verify, right? It's like, oh, okay, this is what happens if I make the decision I just made. 
and then you go back and you goof around some more, right? So, um, you know, I don't, I don't. But there's no real advantage to saving this particular view. You could get it back in five seconds, right? Uh, right. The only, the only thing that you might want to do is if you get into a, a more complex drawing, uh, and you want to have like, let's say, oh, just a, a rendering of my front fills or just my center cluster or something like that. That's where you can utilize groups. So uh, like when you go into plot, uh, hang on. So let me close that. So when you go into plot, if you had groups set up, you know, you could, you could say, instead of like selecting each last speaker, you could just make a group for each sort of like thing you want to plot together. And then you would select the groups. I don't have any groups defined right now, other than there's the default group, which is all loudspeakers. But that's just a way to kind of give yourself a little shortcut of like, okay, let me just get the front fills back and plot those real quick. Um, so I can show you how to how to do that. Ooh, I just did something. What did I do? Something that it didn't like. Get out of here. Okay. Uh, all right. So let me show you now how to get like let's say. Um, I want to have a little practical on the stage. I'm going to use like one of those little Rankus Hines CX41s that we have in our shop. Uh, and I want to put that on the stage and see what it's going to do. Uh, so let's say I'm going to stick something here. X value, we'll say zero for now. Z value will be zero because I'll just put it on the stage. Um, and then uh, Y value. That's just about how far upstage it's going to be. Uh, we can just say 20 feet. Why not? And I'll hit apply. Oh, wait. Sorry. That was a, I put a point in there, not a speaker. Let me delete that. Did the wrong one. Insert loudspeaker. There. OK. So uh, x will be 0, y will be 20, z will be 0. Uh, I'm going to set the vertical angle back to zero. And now I've got to pick a loudspeaker. So I don't want the UPA1P. Uh, I want something else. So let me go in and browse here. And let's see what we've got for Rankus Hines. OK. I'm looking for the CX41. Oh, it's got the CFXs. Those are close. Oh, it only has the 121, 151, 61, and 81. It doesn't have the 41. So what do I do? I guess I can't do my project. Um, or maybe I'll just pick something else because I don't want to go to the trouble of going and finding the file. No, like pick the one you want. Like let's try it. Let's go get it. So I'm going to hit close. We'll, we'll OK that for now. We'll come back to it. So I have up here already the Rank of Science website. Uh, and you know every manufacturer is going to have this stuff placed somewhere different in their, uh, hang on, Ease is nagging me to save. Thank you. Uh, so uh, every, every website, last, last speaker manufacturer website is going to have this in a different place. Um, so you may have to dig a little bit to find it. Uh, if you go to, in, in this case, if you go to service and support downloads, uh, it'll take you to a page for a whole bunch of stuff. You can download spec sheets, manuals, ease data, all kinds of stuff. Maybe. There it is. Okay, and then it has like over here on the left, like document types, like what sort of thing you're looking for. And I'm going to check ease data. Don't do the ease focus. Ease focus is like a free uh, version of ease that uses totally different data types um, and only does like 2D mapping and stuff like that. Uh, so don't worry about that. Uh, so ease data, and I'm looking for uh, the C series point source. So it's going to be this one, because I'm looking for the CX41. So I'll click this button. It's going to download it as a zip file. There it is. Let's open it up. Um, OK, so there it is. I'm going to hit this Extract button so it takes it out of the zip and makes an actual real folder for it. And Extract All. OK. All 
All right, so there it is. It's in downloads, and I've got this folder. Let's see what's in here. So there's all kinds of stuff in here. Um, so uh, interesting thing about the way Ease stores data is it stores all kinds of different things. So you've got, like, here's the CX41, the one I'm looking for, and it's got this uh, uh, SPK file. It's got a .lob, an FED, an FVT, and a PHS, all for these things, okay? Um, different parts of the data are stored in each file. Uh, so you have to move all of them. You can't just pick one. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go put this in the place where all the other stuff is. So I'll go to local disk, go to users, public. You don't have to put it in this spot, but I highly recommend it because then you don't have to search for it again. It'll be in your ease uh, database. So public documents, ease data, and you're going to look for global speakers for and let's look for the Rankus Hines folder. There it is. And I'm going to back up here and just take this folder, this RHC series, and put it in here. And So there it is. Now if I go to Ease, I should be able to get it. So I'll go to Properties again. Let's open up the speaker model. We'll go to Browse. And let's go find Rankus Heinz. There it is. And I should see my folder. There it is, RHC series. That's the one that I did. And there it is, cx41.spk. So I'll add that into my project now. And I'll select it now from my menu. Click OK. And now I've got to redo all my levels because see how it, all these went red? That's because it's still using the SPL values from the UPA, which is a much louder uh, deal. So I'm going to do set all to max again, and it knocks it down to a much quieter level. And uh, yeah, there we go. Let's click OK. So there it's sitting there. It's sitting on the stage floor. And maybe now I want to see what it does. So I'll hit Save here. And we'll go back to our main view and hit Save. And now let's go to Area Mapping again. And uh, I'll do Direct SPL. And in this case, I want to use a different loudspeaker. So now I've got an S2. That's probably the one I want. So do that. And we'll click OK. I'll leave it at 4K for fun. There we go. So here's what it does. Uh, this is just sitting on the stage. Uh, first of all, you notice it's quite a bit quieter, right? Uh, the loudest it gets is 74 dB. And I've got it running at its theoretical max. So this thing is not going to be anywhere near as loud as my UPA, but 74 dB is, that's plenty of sound for, you know, a practical sound effect or something or some underscore. That's plenty loud. Uh, Coverage-wise, we're one, two, three, four, five, six. We're really close. Um, but, you know, if it's just a practical, I don't know that we care as much about those high frequencies. We probably care more about the lower frequencies. So let's take a look at one kilohertz and render that. There it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we're pretty, we're pretty close. This could work. Everyone should hear it. Let's try 500 hertz. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. That one works good too. All right. So there you go. Uh, that's how you go and get uh, directivity data from a manufacturer website, get it in the right spot on the computer, and then load it up in your ease file. Questions about that? So, no, I don't think so some manufacturers will actually give you an installer with their ease data 
and it will usually install it into that default ease folder, but you may have to just verify that when it, when it does that. Like I think EAW does that, they give you an installer. Okay, so a couple other things. As let me just show you how to rename this stuff. So uh, let me, I'll right click on my original one and I'll call this, uh, you just go loudspeaker label and you're gonna say uh, center, I'll say center cluster UPA1C. Okay, and now I get that label there. And then I could go to this one and I'll say um, upstage CX41. And now that one shows up there. And so now if I go over, let me save that. And get, so get used to doing the save off and stuff. It, you know, it seems cumbersome, but the second it crashes on you and you lose two hours of work. Hey, Jason, is there a difference yeah. between pressing the save in the upper left hand corner and double tapping the save project in the file window? Um, probably not. That I usually just hit the little button, but it's probably the same. Okay, so now you see when I select last speakers, I have those labels that I put in, right? So I can do my UPA, um, and then go back to my four kilohertz, and we'll render it. There it is. Okay, uh, so that's labels. I'll show you one more thing. So let's say uh, I want to have two of these CX40, maybe one on each side of the stage instead of just one in the center. Uh, so I'm going to take this, go to properties, and show you this really cool trick. So I'm going to say on X, I'm going to send it 15 feet over to stage left. And look what happened. It created a second one. See that over here? Why did it create a second one? Because you mirrored it? Well, I didn't mirror it. I just moved the one I did. Yeah. But... Uh, so you can have a reference point uh, if you need to go back? No. Uh, it, so it created a second one that's not in the place the original one was. It's because uh, you remember when I showed you that uh, room data thing? And I said, there's going to come a time when you may want to turn off room symmetric. Yeah, OK. So it was. It was because it, Ease was mirroring it. Yeah. Well, it was because I had the room in symmetric mode, right? So when you have the room in symmetric mode, that saves you a lot of time when you're drawing the room because it just reflects all of your points. Uh, but when you start putting the loudspeakers in, this might be a problem for you. Uh, in this case, because I said, oh, I want to put one on each side of the stage, it, it's helping me. It's saving me an extra step. Um, but you may want to get, once, once you get to the point where the, where the room is working, like you can put loudspeakers in, you can plot it, and it works OK, uh, try to do that first before you uncheck the symmetric mode. Because if there's a problem with your room that is going to make it so you can't plot SPL or something, you want to find that out before you turn off the symmetry. Uh, because you can't go back. Once you've, once you've turned on the symmetry, you can't go back to symmetric mode again. Uh, so fixing that problem in the room is going to be harder once you turn off the symmetric mode. So, uh, but in my case, my room works. I've managed to plot some stuff, so that's no big whoop. So I'm going to turn off the symmetric mode for now and hit apply. Now it's going to say, you've changed room symmetry. Depending on the project size, this can take a few minutes. Do you want to proceed? Why does it take a few minutes? Because it now has to create actual points for all the phantom ones that it reflected. So I'll click OK. Uh, and it didn't take long because I only had four points. It was no big whoop. Uh, so there we go. Now uh, what has happened is this one is now it's a separate loudspeaker, right? So it, but it just doesn't have a label now. So I would have to go and give it a, la a label if, that's, if I wanted to use it. So let me delete that. Um, all right, so that's how you would uh, sort of deal with multiple loudspeakers. You, sometimes that symmetric mode can help you, other times it won't, depending on what you're trying to do. But you can add multiple loudspeakers in, 
uh, and get that in there. The other thing you can do, like in your case for this project, if you're going to be uh, putting, trying out a couple of different ideas, you don't have to have a separate file for each of those. Uh, you can just put more than one loudspeaker in the same spot. Uh, and then when you go to render it in that area mapping, just select which one you want to map, and it's fine. Uh, as long as they're all a different label, then you're good to go. Let me show you the grouping thing really quick. If you go to back into properties, all you have to do to group something is create a, what's called a group label. Uh, so like I could say, this is my center cluster group, and just say CC. And then every loudspeaker that I put that CC in for group label, uh, it gets added to that group. And then when I go into the area mapping, I can select that group and it'll select all those loudspeakers to, to render them. All right, I think that is all I'm going to show you today. Uh, so what I want you to do, work on over the weekend, is, is see if you can start plotting some, putting some loudspeakers into your file now and see what they do. So what what I would suggest is maybe just do the thing that you did for the original Directivity project. Just pull those same loudspeakers in, put them in the places that you put them, and let Ease sort of tell you uh, a bit better data about what that's going to do. And then you can tweak it from there. Uh, for, the, for the project, I don't, you don't have to do that. I don't, you don't have to use the same ones. You can use different ones. But I'm just saying that might be a place to start, is to try what you did on paper and see if it helps at all, or if it does anything close to what you thought it would do in your uh, sort of paper and pencil version uh, of the project. So work on that over the weekend. And then on Monday, we'll you know, talk about a few more details and some uh, more complicated stuff. So any other questions? Yeah. yeah. So, oh, I'm sorry, Lance. Yeah. Do you want to go? OK, so. Um, for like Nora and I who did multiple uh, places, will it automatically do the renderings or do we have to do two and then put them together? What's the sitch? What do you mean? You mean, oh, the multiple areas? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it'll, it'll do those, no problem. So um, cool, cool. you just, the only thing, you, what, what you'll have to do is you, you may, when you go to mapping, um, hang on, I got to save. It's angry with me. Uh, OK, so we are going to acquire the project data, recalculate the map. Yes. So the only thing you might need to do is when you go in here is uh, under items, you, just, you might want to just verify that both of those audience areas are selected. So click on audience area and just make sure they're both highlighted. OK, um, gotcha. Or you'll see them in the list. You'll, see, you'll have a comma separated list here. Uh, and then it'll be fine. It'll, just, it'll put them on both. Cool, thank you. Other questions? OK, so I have two questions. The first one, I put a speaker into my room. And when I click on it, sorry about the sounds, and go to properties, um, under that menu, it has the loudspeaker label, and then it has the mirror image label. Yeah. How do I delete a mirror image of a speaker? You or do have, I just have to have the asymmetrical mode and then delete it? Yeah. So uh, anything that is not sitting on the center line is gun. If you're in symmetrical mode, it will make a mirror image of it. So okay. uh, so yeah, you either have to put it on the center line, or if you don't want that mirror image one, then you got to turn off room symmetry and then you can delete that second one. Okay. Got it. Um, my next, and this might maybe be the same thing when I'm going to the calculations tab and then trying to get to my like room data or to area mapping, uh -huh. I get a, an error that says, please check data first. Yeah. So what you, that means that you've, you, you have to go in, make sure you save in the edit project window. So you made a change, right? You got to save, save in the edit room thing, go to the main view, hit save. Okay. Then you have to go over to the mapping and you've got to say that acquire project data again. So basically okay. what happens is ease, uh, when, you, when you hit save in ease, it does this thing uh, where it, uh, let me see if I can show you where it is. Um, 
Yeah, so this, this uh, recompute or check data, that is implied when you hit save. So you, you can actually check the data without saving, um, but what that check data does is it verifies that you haven't made a mistake that would cause an error in the rendering math. Uh, and it, it won't let you do any plots in the area mapping until it's sort of like checked a little box that says, yeah, the data is good, you should be able to render this. So I usually just hit save, right, rather than trying to like do it separately because it, it checks the data as part of the saving process. Okay, so I went to hit save and it says, it says a sim speaker model used in sim room. Yeah, so uh, you are going to have to probably turn off the room symmetry because there are some loudspeaker, uh, depending on how the manufacturer made the loudspeaker data file, uh, it may not be able to use that symmetric mode. And probably what that means is uh, they may have only created like a quarter frame of the total directivity and uh, yeah. Ease is supposed to sort of interpolate the rest of that based on that quarter frame. Uh, and it maybe can't do that in symmetric mode. So um, you're just gonna have to turn off room symmetry if you wanna use that loudspeaker. Okay. Any other questions? All righty. So uh, spend the weekend and working on this, plop your last speakers in and see what you can make them do. Save often and uh, don't forget to upload your license when you're done every time. So like I said, there, go ahead. Sorry, I have one more question. Is there a place you can see a list of all of the speakers in your, well, really all everything in your drawing, like your different area listening plans and your faces and your speakers. So if you go back to the main window, um, that's all in here. So uh, under like this room edit thing, you can go to speaker models. These are all the ones you've pulled in. Uh, that, that's like, those are the ones that you've imported like as available to be used. And then here are the actual loudspeakers you've put into it. Um, here are all the points you drew. Here is the audience, the, the sort of, surface you drew, here's the audience area. You know, you can, it'll actually give you a table view of that. So you could go into like, you know, edit vertices. Um, oh, and the, it won't let me do that because the data's already open, but you can actually go and edit it in a table view here if you wanted to change any of those points. Um, so that's, yeah, that's where you can see where it all is. And it tells you, um, you know, the X, Y, Z location of it and the aiming for the loudspeakers and all that kind of stuff. So there's a, there's a lot of stuff in here, but this is, you know, this is the whole database. Thanks. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, I'll cut you loose and let you work on this over the weekend. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, post them into the Canvas discussion so that other folks can see the answers if you wouldn't mind. Uh, if, for, if for whatever reason I can't answer the question that way, then we can do a little Zoom chat or something and, and look at it. But try, try the Canvas chat, just that way, um, like I say, you can all benefit from the answer. Uh, and then we'll play around with some other stuff a little bit on Monday. And then I'm, Sounds good. Thanks, Jason. And then I'm pretty sure the project is due a week from today. Is that what I said? Yeah. I believe so, yeah. I think so, yeah. Whatever I said on Canvas is, is the accurate one. All right. Well, I will see you uh, on Monday then. Thanks, Jason. All right. All right. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Yep. Bye.